What's going on, YouTube? What up, community? Happy holidays. It is now 2023, and the season has begun already. We're through our major one. We're through stage number one. Stage number two is right around the corner. And with the early start of the season, there's been a lot of drama, some roster changes. Bro, it's been pretty crazy. And uh, I know a lot of the old heads rock with me. A lot of people in here are trying to see what my take is going to be on a lot of this stuff. Uh, for those of you who haven't been really keeping up, this video will update you on basically all the stuff that went down with Optic uh, and that information. And I'll let you guys know what I think, but let's just hop right into it. Why don't we? All right, guys. So as you guys can see, here is the you know finish from major number one. We saw New York take down the W. Uh, we saw Seattle Surge get second with a fantastic run. Big performances out of Pred and Sib. And you can see, you know, some of the teams here, you know, doing pretty decent. First event, uh, LA Thieves. They had some good matches, some game five losses, end up top six. Toronto Ultra Phase showing up, doing well. Legion with a big performance. But Optic Texas all the way down here at nine through 12. We only have 12 CDL teams, so they basically placed last. And, uh, that's the big story right like these guys needed to make a change um you know if you pull up like their stats over here you can see nothing really particularly great hardpoint was decent. s and d was horrendous uh which we'll talk about a little bit later and control also horrible a game mode that they have been amazing at you know dating back to cold war how good was this team at control they were phenomenal so yeah for optic you know they wanted to get ahead of this this is scum's last season you want to be able to have a team that can compete that can get a championship and i think top 12 was just a little bit too out of the realm of them uh you know being like uh, we can salvage this um so they decided to make a change and, and try to get ahead of it and there's a couple people that they had in mind you know uh you know they were thinking about pred they were thinking about rcds there's a lot of rumors uh but i think it's basically confirmed at this point that they tried to get pred that they thought about or at least made a, an effort to get rcds uh and they were unable to do so and let's just talk about like the dynamic of this team for a second so you look at it right and in this game in this meta i mean this team should have been pretty solid you got dash and illy who can be your ars you got scump and who can be your smgs um but it just wasn't working for them uh in terms of the the ar play they want to have somebody who you know is going to be that disciplined player who's going to rotate who's going to play their life and you know, they kind of have that uh, in Dashi and Illy, uh, but I guess like the pacing that the team had, it wasn't working out that well in control. Their teamwork, their chemistry wasn't on point, uh, weren't filling gaps properly, uh, throwing their lives away at times. You know, when I was watching them play, my biggest criticism of the Optic Texas roster was like the guy that I would see on rotation, the guy that I would see making the plays in a lot of these hills and these maps was Shotzi. The ARs were not making it easier on him, which is why well, I'm a little bit concerned in the change that they made going forward, but you know, we'll get into that, like I said, in a little bit. But you can see here, so this is like their stats so far throughout Major 1. And then uh, we can see this is them in last year in Vanguard. They were the number one search and destroy team. Absolutely disgusting, uh, which is a big difference, man, from, you know, four and six. This is a team that I expect to be dominating in search and destroy. Now, this is a game where search and destroy is a little bit more one dimensional. I do understand that. And this is also the first event, so very small sample size, but Optic started off the year great in search last year, so that was a bit concerning. So I can understand why they would maybe think to go ahead and make a change when it comes, you know, to that game mode. Uh, but yeah, let's go through some of like the the info and the drama that was going on. So the biggest rumor was that they were trying to get Pred, that they were talking to him. It was going to be one of the biggest moves that we've ever had in COD history, according to like uh, some sources. You can see here, CDO Intel, Crone, my guy, always dropping a bomb. I got to show mad love to him. Pred to Texas is unlikely to happen at this current point in time. Both teams are going back and forth over the last week. But in the end, Seattle Surge declined what would have been the largest deal in Call of Duty League history. And, you know, I understand that. I understand why Seattle did that. Now, granted, Pred probably wanted to make the move. Um, why wouldn't he? It's Optic Texas. It's a life-changing opportunity. Uh, playing with Scump in his last season, which likely you could be the heir to that throne afterwards to take over that franchise. It's a big opportunity for a guy like Pred. Um, even though he's in a good situation, he does have a lot of fan support and he's done well for Seattle. Strategically, business-wise, it makes a, uh, it's a good move for him with also talented players. So I get why he wanted to do it. Uh, there was also a video that Pred, uh, of him talking about it. Yeah, I have it right here. Let's check it out. Let's just leave it at everything that, everything that could have possibly happened to make it happen. You know was attempted let's just say that let's just say everything that's possible to make it happen was attempted let's just leave it at that it was attempted and it was as possible it was you know 
let's just say it was um yeah it was attempted to the highest level it just wasn't possible We've done everything we could it just wasn't possible but that's just how it is guys that's just how it is man but hey still got a season a long season gotta lock in baby gotta lock in all right so i take a couple things from that clip um Let's move on over to this picture. You guys can sit on that for a second. I take a couple things from that clip, and I think I probably have some insight that some other people might not have. One, that's a tough situation for Pred. Uh, you know, he's on a team with some guys that gave him an opportunity, right? He's won championships with them, and they're still extremely good championship contending squad. Uh, and, you know, he gets an opportunity from a team like Optic Texas, and I'm sure like his teammates were bummed, right? But I'm sure they understood why he would like want to make that move, but they were probably still bummed out a little bit. And then for the organization, it's awful. It's also a very tough spot because if you got a player who's, you know, thinking about making a move, you know, it's in your mind, it's like, okay, this guy's never going to leave our team. We're paying him the bag. We have a good team around him. We support him. He's gaining fans and we're doing well, but you know, like if Optic Texas comes around, he's probably going to want to make that move. So it's tough for them because then they're like, damn, we got to keep this guy happy. But there's like no way to keep him happy in this situation uh, we can't just give him more money we can't just like let him go to optic right so what do we do um we don't want to make our comp better so they end up just having to keep him you know it's tough for pred and the mental on pred uh especially if they don't do well in this like next tournament or so um and i've been in this situation before guys i was on a team uh you know in evil geniuses and i and uh infinite warfare team wasn't that great I had an offer to possibly join Envy, a team that ended up getting top two of champs, and uh, EG wouldn't let me go. They wouldn't let me move. Uh, and what it did to my mental was so horrible. Um, like, it was just, I was just like, damn, like, <laughs> let me get out of the situation. But I understood I was good. I was like, they wouldn't let me leave. It would have compromised the team. And it just, business wise, it just makes sense. Uh, but you feel like it could be like a halt in your career, which sucks. Um, but that's why contracts exist. And then also for Pet, I think it's a little bit different because his team is still very solid. So like, and I think Pred, you know, probably a more fierce competitor than I and that he's going to be able to focus up and still play 100% for his squad, which I did at the time with my team, but it was just hard within the back of your mind. You're like, you knew that the other team would have been better. At least for Pred in this situation, his team is already performing better than an Optic was. So maybe it wasn't more so him wanting to make the move just because he felt like they would be contending for championships more it was just more for like the opportunity for his career and the potential in the future which will help him sort of like get back on point with his seattle squad so if you guys are concerned about that as seattle fans i don't think that'll be as big of an issue but it's definitely something uh for a little bit of concern um and you know we'll be watching pred to see how that plays out but either way excited for that seattle team tough for pred but he has a bright future he's very young um and yeah that's sort of like uh my historical you know opinion on that <laughs> i've been through it i know how it is moving on though so i know they tried to get our cities as well we saw the uh change that leg made um for those of you who weren't here for that uh actually i can just like pull that up real quick they uh moved up their challenger squads so oh um we can see here there's some rumors that rcs was going to be going to optic as well which would have been very interesting i think it would have solved a lot of their problems actually i really do if you're going to make a move with dashi i think rcs was a good one but anyways our or lag bring up their entire team around rcs you know they they get rid of spart neptune hook and they bring up their challengers team i'll salt joe deceives and exceed um which is a little bit wild of a move but they were playing well in the challengers so you can't deny they're playing absolutely fantastic they did good in the prom good in the pro -am. let's not gas it okay let's keep it a buck they didn't go above and beyond but they played all right okay playing against pro teams taking some maps taking some series is solid um but nothing to write home about Anyways, it was deemed better than the original LAG team. So they pick up all three of those guys. Joe Deceives really impressed me throughout the tournament. So yeah, this is a team that we'll see going into Major 2. This is a crazy gamble by the LAG management um, who have you know made a lot of crazy decisions over time. And I'm hoping this one pays out. Uh, but yeah, this is the squad. I hope RC is happy to be here. i got to be honest. I feel like, you know, I don't want to speak for him, but... Just my opinion for our cities this is probably a really really big letdown for him that this is where his career has gone right now not not to shame these guys guys it's just our cities was on phase 
he was on phase winning championship after championship at a year of all second places competing with championships and now he's like it's like he's come up out of the gutter playing with challengers players um i think that this is like very tough it's a small disservice to our cities uh but hey sign a contract you get paid you gotta do what you're told and that's what's happening uh this is his team and i hope they can do really well i'm rooting for joe deceives i'm rooting for us all i'm rooting for a seat i'm really rooting for them guys i'm just giving you my honest take on how on how this is and how our is probably feeling in this situation so the other side of this point lag one of the first teams to like give a crazy opportunity like that that's big moves it's big news right we haven't seen this really before but anyways optic tried to get our cities and they don't uh let's see rc speaks out about the optic situation says you want it it wasn't me i'm gonna be real it might get me in trouble but i wanted it obviously those three are godlike just not how things work with contracts i owe lg the same faith and trust they have in me to build something special with them i'm sorry for dreams being killed so he wanted it to happen right once again this might hurt rcd's mental a lot guys like a lot so we'll see what he's able to do with lag this is kind of like you know people have been in this situation and it's just it could lead to some problems you know getting off like damn this team <laughs> i could have been on this team so we'll see how rcd is able to deal with that you know he's probably going through some of the most turmoil of any of our pro players like when you really think about it like going from phase into this is crazy territory for for our cities um so if he rises up and makes something special makes a crazy run with this team he deserves all the flowers in the world in my book i got so much support for him um but anyways so leaving that they don't get any of the players they initially want and optic has to make a move so who do they go with Ook, he was a free agent lag dropped him and you know luckily for optic they can go ahead and they can just go snag hook which is a great player to go and snag right like it's it's very tough out there to grab players um especially mid-season trying to make these big transactions and things like that but optic were able to do it and you can see uh zio is what they call themselves hook shots in italy they won that world championship uh in 2020 the online world championship and they won some events with the dallas empire taking down phase uh, with crim six and clay as their fourth and fifth uh this is a dynamic trio they've done a lot of damage together they're extremely dangerous and then they ended up breaking up going their separate ways um but now they're back together and this is the squad alongside skump uh and this is gonna change the dynamic of this team um like a lot you know you got hook on it who's you know hyper aggressive he's a playmaker you got Shotzi, who's aggressive, who's a playmaker. They get things done and they bounce off of each other really well. And then you got Illy, who's now going to move to that main AR position. He's going to be disciplined. He's going to be hitting the rotos. He's going to be in the positions. He's going to, you know, trying to be that post up annoying guy because that's how you have to be with the scar. You have to be posted. You have to be a rat. You really do. Um, and can Illy do that to a fine degree? We'll see. You know, Illy uh, tends to be. You know in the mix a little bit more but i think he can and then you got skump who's going to be your flex player i think skump can play any role um i think in flex in this game is just really second ar so he's going to be running an ar basically all the time uh and i think skump can do really well in that role i think this is a team that can have really good chemistry i think they all sort of think alike in game which also helps a lot uh and when i say like think alike they would make the same decision in most of the situations that they're in like hook and shotzi are gonna think very similar skump as well um so i think this team will work together pretty well i think uh it doesn't solve all their issues though and search and destroy they might get a bit better because of the aggression um but dashi's a stellar search player um in hard point in terms of rotations and being there early and playing your life uh i think you know hook's a hard kill if he's playing smart if he's on the rotos if he's gonna take some of that pressure off of shotzi uh yeah it will help them a lot because it's gonna be hard to kill these guys they're gonna need to get a kill and get out with their lives um but he's also a guy who's prone to make mistakes right to put you in a bad situation as well uh can he learn from that we saw what rambo was able to do with him back then who had the most progression of a player we've ever seen um when it was when he did join that team as a coach with hook on it um so we'll see uh, I do have some concerns about this team and their decision making in game uh, as opposed to some of these other squads that we have. But in this game, like like we talked about, you know, so many times, it's a rattier game and hard point. You get to a position, you get a kill, you play your life. You know, you try to be hard to you try to be hard to find. You got to be a nuisance. And they got some good players to play those types of situations. It's very simple. This game, you know, there's like 
when you you rotate you set up you push it out you stay alive it's not that crazy um there's a lot of money hills in this game with some of these new spawns though we do have like the parallel spawns that you'll get um i think hook and Shotzi are players who are going to thrive in these situations when you think of like a zarqua hydroelectric and how they've changed the spawns uh that is a little bit more intricate though and you'll see it play out over these few weeks um and we'll see how these guys do when we get back into the online league but like i said i don't love this move by any mean uh i don't think it makes them like astoundingly better but optic was already a team that had a lot of potential to improve anyways with their last roster so they could definitely get better but let's go look at uh shotzi's video how long is this video so far 17 minutes you know what i'm gonna give you guys the good content let's Yo. go ahead and check this out and see what he was saying i wish you, i wish y'all actually saw this today we were flying <laughs> I'm sure if i asked him like if if i asked him like yo did we feel as a team he definitely would have said no like bro we that ass did not feel like a team it felt like we were going we we're getting on every day like just going through the motions like every every single one of us i'm not just kind of like saying brandon i'm saying every single one of us you know what i mean and like whenever you're in an environment like that like bro something just needs to change i mean i <laughs> what am i able to say I, I don't know what i'm able to say or not i mean we tried getting them simple as that i mean like it was the most in all right, I will say this. All right, so whenever, bro, and whoever the leaks are, dude, I'm sorry, bro, but you guys are fucking ass. Because for one, whenever we try, like, there was a rumor saying, like, we're trying to go for Pred and Nalik or whatever, right? And at first, we weren't, we weren't even trying to go for Pred originally. Like, obviously, we'd want him, but, like, we, did, we didn't even go for Pred because of the fact that, like, I, we just thought that, like, that would never happen, right? There's one. Two, um... Yeah, we tried getting out like obviously that you know didn't happen and then from there we were like i mean bro we might just have to long shot it and just go for pred i i brought up pred so like if we did end up getting him but like so i would have been like the, the culprit you know what i mean is that the right word but obviously we didn't get pred so it's like uh, <laughs> some some guy's gamer tag was warlord right and i'm not gonna cap bro like like whenever seth called me that I literally looked it up the next day. All right, so let's skip. He's he's chatting. What was Hugh like when you asked him? He was on the fence about it at first. I'm fucking around. Obviously, he wanted to. Are you kidding me? He was like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> imagine, imagine not being on a, on a team and, and like, yeah, I don't really know. Okay, guys. So without you know wasting too much time watching this, uh, you guys can go check this out. Is on the COD competitive Reddit. Uh, we heard some of the things that he said. Basically, uh, that they went up to those players. Uh, they weren't even going to go off the pred at first. I don't need to reiterate it you guys heard it uh they ended up with hook so he was their third and final option they end up getting him uh so it sounds like it didn't go that well for them when they were making these changes but he said the scrims went well and only time will tell everything else is speculation at this point um but i'm rooting for these guys i hope they can do well as i root for all the teams um i'm just a bit concerned about this change in terms of the dynamic and the decision making and respawns uh but we shall see either way this was your one-stop shop for all the information Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a really good time making it. We got some more content on the way. When you guys like, you comment on these videos. It helps a lot. It allows me to make more content. So go ahead and interact. Let me know what you guys think about this change. If you think they're going to do well. Um, and what you're looking out for. Going into stage number two. We're right around the corner. Much love and appreciation, fam. I'll see you guys in the streams. Twitch.tv slash nameless. We're live Mondays through Fridays. Check it out. Peace out. And enjoy your day.